Painting is just another way of keeping a diary. I used to be scared before to paint. The truth is, if you have faith and be consistent, your painting gets better every day. This video is just a springboard to start painting digitally. I went through the basics of digital painting and the tools that can be used for it. Let's get started. So I'm hitting Ctrl N. So this is the default shortcut and I'm putting a resolution to 100, but I don't do like 72. But if you want more resolution, you can go higher. So I would say like, don't go below 300 because your file size will get like super big. And I also work on 8-bit, it doesn't matter. You can work on 16-bit too. Even this is 2K by 2K, you can see the file size is, you know, close to 12 MB. So I'm gonna click OK. So lines and digital painting. So if, when I hit B, it goes to my brush mode. So you can see I can make any lines, but I'm making the lines from my pad, but I'm just looking at the screen because that's a muscle memory. You have to get used to it. But like if you practice it, you'll just get it. So it's always to draw lines away from you than you know, bringing it to you. I think you guys can screen. It's always to go away from you know coming in like towards you because we have tendency of doing motions of doing this than doing this. Like if you want to try, you know, you can try it at home because that will have a really dynamic, you know, stroke and you guys can see it because it's really hard to come in. Like my, you know, I can do it, but like still like I'm, I'm like really uncomfortable doing it. So it's always to do lines, you know, go like that. So you can create lines and however you want it. And you can also hold on shift and you can create a straight line and you can hold on shift, click once and click here. So it creates like a straight line, but it has like some kind of like a gradient to it because of my brush. So if you see, I'm creating straight lines by holding on shift. So you can create multiple shapes. And you can also create like lighter lines and thicker lines by using the pressure on your tablet. So this is like I'm using less pressure on the tablet. If I'm holding really hard, I'm like literally holding like really, you know, like dipping it in. So you can see the lines are getting stronger and stronger. And you can also increase the brush size by doing going to the brackets. But I used Q and W because if you see while I'm painting, it's easier to have shortcuts on this side. So I don't have to go here for the brackets. Instead, I can go to Q and W. And you can edit the shortcuts by edit and keyboard shortcuts. And if you go down here, uh, where is it? <laughs> I can't even find it. Oh, it should be here. Uh, oh, it should be here works uh, same as like any other medium so since i have my brush size you know on my left hand side q and w so i can you know but let's say you have a shape i'm just gonna put it black so this is our shape and i'm gonna fill it in it's not recommended to do shading like we do it in pencil because this is digital painting, right? What I could do is I can literally like create a shape and do this and I can erase it. So this takes like, you know, like a second in stuff. I'm just going and doing the shading like one by one, like lines by line. And this looks more dynamic than this one. And I'm gonna show you guys a few concepts in shading. <clears throat> so let's say, let's create a shape so i'm going to create a shape by so i'm going to create a new layer by clicking here and i'm just going to black and i'm going to fill the layer by alt delete so whenever you create a shape here and you have like a marquee tool circle ellipse and single marquee tool and stuff like that and it, there's also a lasso tool you guys can use to create freeform shapes. Now you can see I'm creating freeform shapes and I'm hitting control all del like uh, all delete. See now we kind of like you know seeing different things like here. So this is really useful while painting because we are getting free shapes by this. So why this free shapes and why this uh, the solid shapes are really important? Because while shading, 
For example, if I want to paint this red, I can go and do the red like this, all right? But here's the trick. Instead of going and doing this like manually, there is a concept called transparency pixels. You could see at the top here near the lock and there is something like a transparent grid. So if you click on this and if you go and paint, it only paints on the shape. It's pretty awesome, right? So now I can like, you know, go and paint, you know, let's say like, you know, this is some kind of monster. And he has like, you know, like a caterpillar and he has like a darker legs. And I can't paint anywhere else. I can only paint on the freeform sheets. If I want to paint outside, I just have to click it outside and he is flicking his finger. There you go, it's a monster. And there's another concept called uh, a clipping mask. So this is okay. Now we learned how to do transparency pixels by creating freeform shapes and like doing it. It also work on any shapes on your brush strokes too. For example, if I have a brush stroke like this, I'm hitting transparency pixels and I'm gonna painting in shape and it will paint basically. And if you see when it comes here, it gets transparent because because my stroke has a gradient based on the pressure of what I'm doing in my tablet. So the, the green looks darker here and it gets lighter as the transparency goes here. Okay, so now we learn transparency pixels. I will show you guys another concept called clipping mask. So these are really useful uh, in shading because it's easier to do stuff because I didn't know this concept when I was learning how to paint because a lot of people doesn't teach me. Like I figured it out and you know, from watching tutorials and stuff like that. So we have this shape. So we know that like, you know, the shortcut for filling a shape is like all delete. So we created it. So I'm gonna create a new layer now and I'm going to hold on Alt. Like you have to hold on Alt. So once you go near this layer and you have to go in the, go in the between the one layer and the second layer. So if I go here, you can see like this inverted arrow pops up. So if I click that, so it, you know, it says like it's pointing down to this layer. So if I paint, if I go and paint on this layer, it will paint, it will does the same thing. You may ask, so Dinesh, like what's the difference between transparency pixels and clipping mask? So in transparency pixels, you are painting on the shape and you have to go and change the shape again. But for example, if I get rid of this and if I paint something like this and if I go back to my clipping mask, I can go and paint on that shape. And there's other useful uh, thing for uh, uh, clipping mask is I can create another layer. So now I can layer, like layer it like on top of each other. So for example, if I putting some of the color here. And I can put like some green on here. And then I, I can like create as much as layers I want because this gives like more control for you. So if I want to bring the red layer, I can bring it here. And if I want to bring the uh, green layer, I can bring it at the top. And I can, you know, erase it. So now that this gives like, you know, some kind of contrast and you can create like multiple shapes with it and go with it. So that's the difference between the clipping mask and transparency pixels. This is re really useful for people who are beginning to paint. So it's easier for them. So let's jump on to the next concept in uh, shading and digital painting. Okay, so the next concept in uh, shading in uh, digital painting is blending. So if you have to blend between one color to the second color, so for example, I want a really good gradient from this to this. So to do that, I can paint the, like I have uh, less pressure, I'm putting less pressure on my tablet and I'm just breaking this green and I'm doing this. And I'm just doing this. 
So there's a gradation is happening, right? But this process is kind of like a little bit tedious. I don't like this. I really had that you know, issue before. So to avoid this, to make this process easier, there's a concept called blending in Photoshop. So blending is this tool, which is looks like a smudge. It's called smudge tool, so to blend it. So if I go here and pick the soft brush and if I blend it, it doesn't blend that much, but it is blending, but it's not. So that's where, oh, I think it's taking some time. That's where like uh, one of my favorite artists and he creates a tool preset and I kind of really like it. So if I go to the blending, so yes, a tool preset of blending modes, like smudge tools. So these are created in Photoshop. Uh, I don't know how they created it, but this is pretty useful. So there's something called cloud texture. So if I use this, if I use this, you can see the blending is happening, but it's kind of like really, uh, it's going like super crazy. There is something called foggy rain. And this is to create like a, wetness and distortion in the rain ripple the one i really use for painting is called soft blend so if i soft it so there you go so you can see the same thing i can achieve it really faster using the soft blend than i'm just going and painting on each side to get a perfect blend to show this better i'm going to do another one So I'm gonna to go to the soft blend by go to smudge. See, the softness is pretty cool. So you can do with like multiple layers. Like for example, I have this and I have this and I want to soft blend it. And I've, uh, I've put the soft blend to shortcut to N. So it's easier for me. Again, the shortcuts are assigned on my left hand side. So it's easier for me to paint like, you know, without ease. So that's really important while painting digital painting. You have to paint without ease because like you are in the momentum, you're just having fun, you just do it. So if I blend it, you guys can see, I just created a shape from like doing that. And it looks like something now. So if you see from far, it reads properly, right? So that's blending. So uh, here I'm just gonna recap so it's easier. So we learned the transparency pixels, the clipping mask and the blending mode. So the blending mode is done through the smudge tool. So, okay, let's jump on to the next chapter of a call, something called perspective. So perspective is a really important tool while drawing to create depth because when we draw something in reality, we know that this is like a square, but we can imagine as a cube, how we can show a person or to a human eye that this is a cube, right? So in order to do that, there is something called perspective that exists in the real world. And now, now it represents a three dimensional object. The same thing is, you know, translated into perspective. So now it has a three dimensional cube towards it and it has a three dimensional space to it. There is, let's say X and Y and Z. And if you see, let's say this shape, rectangle. This is a rectangle as a flat shape, but I'm pretty sure this, this can be a cylinder too. So the same thing. So in order to make this as a cylinder, this is a really ugly cylinder, but you can see it kind of looks like a cylinder. So now let's do another cylinder. So there you go. So you can make cylinder based on perspective. So there are like three perspectives uh, happen in real world and there is one point, two point, three point and five point. But the only thing I'm, uh, I'm going to concentrate about is one point perspective and two point perspective. So one point perspective is, for example, just going to delete this layer. 
So whenever we see the world, we have something called horizon or our eye level. So this gives a perspective of whatever we are seeing. So eye level is when you are seeing something and it vanishes to one point. So the good example for this is, let me pull up some references so I can show you guys. So I'm going to pull up some references for uh, the one point perspective. There you go. So if you see this railway track, the, both these rails are, you know, vanishing to one point. That's your horizontal line. That's your eye level. Even though it looks like, you know, when you're standing, it looks like it looks flat. But, you know, when you see in reality, when you go outside tomorrow, like take a pencil from your eye. And if you, you know, keep it in front of you like this, and it will exactly vanish here. So this is called one point perspective. All the lines are vanishing to one point. So let's create a cube based on that. So since this is your eye level and, and there's another concept, whenever in perspective, when you see something in above eye level, you only see the bottom. When you see below the eye level, you only see the top. Okay, let's do that. Let's say I'm uh, uh, creating a cube at the bottom of my eye level. So this is our flat shape. Let's say this is our vanishing point, VP. So I'm going to holding on shift. So I'm just going to create this and create this. This is popping because I'm holding on shift for too long. So now you can see we are seeing the top plane and the front plane and the side plane. Let's take this concept and make something above our eye level. It's the same thing. I'm just creating no. So now if you see this is our front plane, this is our bottom plane, and this is our side plane. So you can see the difference, right? Let's say like you know a cube is let's say the cube is on like exactly you know half and half of eye level. And you won't see the top and the bottom. And let's say something like that. So when whenever something is on your eye level, you will see just one. You won't see the like you know top on the bar. So you will see the front plane and you will see the side plane. So that's a concept of one point perspective. So once you start drawing, it's I think like it's intuitive. Like once you start drawing, when you think about everything in perspective, it makes sense. Okay, let's go to two point perspective. And you can also have multiple vanishing point, it doesn't matter. So let's say, you know, I have another vanishing point here. I can make a vanishing point here as well. So I can make it and it works. And this is our front plane and this is our top, uh, top plane, this is our side plane. Okay, I'm gonna hide this. This is a one point perspective. Let's uh, bring two point perspective. So the only difference between the one point and two point is, you know, two vanishing points. There is two points in our perspective. I'm just going to pull an example so you guys can see. Okay, there's one. Just pull the reference here. This is a pretty good example for our two-point perspective, and I, I also have another image. I'm just showing you guys. I'm going to show you guys. I don't know where it'd go. Okay, anyway. So this is like a pretty good example for a two-point perspective. So you can see the eye level. So the guy is walking, that will that will be your eye level. Like if you're standing and take a picture, that will be your eye level. So that's your vanishing point. Exactly right here. So let's put this into practice. Let's create exactly you know this vanishing point. So I'm saying 
so this is our vanishing it have to be at the bottom this is our vanishing point and i'm just putting the corner of the corner of this building and let's make it small i don't want to be bigger so there is two vanishing points but this is going to be like a little bit distorted but i'll see what i could do so i'm just creating this and literally doing this and this is horizontal plane and this is vertical plane and this is our eye level or horizontal line so now if i make a straight line nope and if i make a straight line here so we literally created this from two vanishing points and everything you know vanishes to that point even if i want to create this i can do that too let's say if i want to create this uh, thing at the bottom i can do that as well so let's you know put some windows so i'm pretty sure that it will be parallel line from here and it's the same thing goes here as well and this vanishing point joins here and this vanishing point goes here So there you go. Now we have this, you know, um, in a two-point perspective. Okay, it's a, the same thing applies in, you know, in the eye level too. If it's below your eye level, you will see the top, and if you're above level, you'll see the bottom. Um, to demonstrate, let's create another cube below our eye level, so you will see what's going to happen. Nope. So we don't have to do any work in two-point perspective because it literally will give all the angles and vanishing point for us. But in reality, you kind of like, you know, go and sit with, you know, two planes, two vanishing points and creating this, right? So it's based on eye level. So it's really good to have like a strong fundamental how perspective works. So when you go to the outside world, you could draw like environments and buildings and everything like that. So this works on everything. So since it's our level, I can also make, I know that, you know, this is the guy's head and I can literally put a guy walking here. And I can also bring in our guy, the friend, by putting the same head and make him a little bigger. And if you want to bring someone closer, you can do that as well. So now we created a depth just by using our level. And if I'm here, I'm just taking this picture from this eye level. And everybody will be sitting here in this eye level. We're just like creating space and, you know, perspective. And there's the last one called three-point perspective. And uh, three-point perspective is usually like most commonly used in um, comics, like to create like depth from the top view. Uh, one example I found was this one. So you can see there is three vanishing point goes in. So this vanishing point goes all the way at the bottom. So this three lines will end at one point. It's the third vanishing point. So this is the HP and this is the VP. So far so good. Uh, so do you guys have any doubts on perspective? I'll just check the chat. Nobody talked. Okay, I'll take silent as the answer. And uh, so while you're painting, so get comfortable like, you know, doing perspective drawings, like drawing cubes, like freely. Like just by creating, you know, shapes like this. Like create different angles because once you get comfortable with this, you can create anything in perspective. So I'm just like, you know, creating cubes based on perspective. And it's really hard to do the cylinders because cylinders are really hard because it's like really, you know, hard to create ellipses. So ellipses are really hard, but so it's better to do a lot of exercise doing ellipses because I'm not doing it like this is a good one. And don't do this and don't do this. Like a fish one. 
and if you can imagine thinking of ellipses like you know seeing from the top bottom and you can also do your eye level that's your eye level and you're seeing you know the bottom of it and super bottom of it and you're seeing the top of it so practice you know those kind of exercises that will help you to create and see forms really good okay let's go to the next agenda oh, what i have it a lighting oh so lighting is really important to create and show forms because without lighting everything is a flat shape in the real world think about like you know building without light and shadow it will be super flat right so there is three types of lighting there is sun lighting there's orcas lighting and there's other source of lighting which exist inside our house like in in a mall or something so for sunlight there is one concept to have in mind while you are uh, thinking about sunlight so i'm just going to show an example of sunlight so we can understand it better so this are the sunlight uh, sunlights right so if you see painters they usually do sunlight because it has a lot of contrast you could see the lightest and the lightest of the value and the darkest and the darkest of the value so when you see this is really pleasing to eyes because our eyes are attracted to contrast so contrast are really important thing while painting it and he, the other thing sunlight creates is the sharp shadows like if you see it's a literally a straight line from this bench to this bench and even if you see uh, the sunlight is creating a super really good contrast there's a white background against dark things so this you know takes you into the painting this leads you into like you know to this picture and you can see it's really you know uh, strong shadows it gets blur blurrier as it goes the other thing about uh, uh, sunlighting is the sky sky doesn't stay there you know just like that it also illuminates light so this building is illuminated mostly by sky than anything else there is uh, there's sun you know hitting there but you know most of the stuff was illuminating here you can see i think this is snow or some kind of i think this is snow but snow you can see like most of the snow was lit by the sky than the sun but when the sun hits it almost goes white and you can see here like you can see the shadows are like super super sharp so uh, that's the difference between like even if you see the figures you know they have like you know sharper shadows tomorrow when you go outside just look for the shadows like when where the sun hits and you can also see like based on the sh angle of the shadows you can see you know what day is it for example my friend he is not a painter but when i showed the picture he could say that it's in the morning just by looking at the lighting so that's how our eye reacts to it right so i'm going to show the next one called overcast lighting overcast lighting is really i think it's i feel like you know it's really boring for me but some painters do it but overcast lightings are you know used to create mood okay let's uh, grab some overcast lighting there you go three pictures okay so if you see like when we see the guy was walking the people are walking do you guys see like sharper shadows but here you see like a blurrier shadows so overcast lighting used to create uh, contact shadows which creates this blurry shadows but here you can see everything is like looks flat this looks like one image like there is only two values there that's it so that's why i don't like doing overcast so i i kind of like tend to create a lot of uh, light and shadow in my painting to create that contrast so this image looks so flat because of that the overcast lighting this other one and this picture is overcast you could see there is like you can see like the contact shadows wherever you know something you know reacts to the ground but the only thing you know works in this painting is the contrast is the you know buses which are super red so our eye goes literally to it so this one and this is like a rainy moody and uh, overcast you can see a person is walking and the shadows are blurrier even you can see the cars and everything the contact shadows 
So next time when you paint something, as soon as you put like a contact shadow underneath any of the object, it will show that, you know, it sits somewhere. Okay, so there's other source of lighting. This is the last lighting, guys. After that, I'll give a demo. Um, this is called, um, okay, I call this other sources of lighting. So these are the lights which exist in the interior. So there is no light, but like our, you know, uh, the environment is, you know, lit by the lights, you know, which we put in. You know, this like point lights, there's like some kind of like fancy lights, there's like some candle lights here and there. So now these are the lights we can use while we paint. So it's better to understand this concept so we can, you know, do it properly. So I'm just going to go to the next agenda. Next topic, our session, uh, design theory. So design theory, I'm not going to talk about it because I'm going to paint. Then while painting, I'll talk about it because it's already, uh, we you know, talked a lot. Okay, let's do it. So while you're digital painting, I don't like white surface on my uh, canvas. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to double click. I locked it for some reason. I'm just going to alt delete and fill something like this just to be, you know, not like pure white. So I'm going to lock this layer and I'm going to create a new layer and let's create uh, like, uh, you know, I'm just holding a shift so it gives like a uniform scale. And if you don't do it, you can do this too, but I'm just creating a uniform scale and I'm going to put like a mid gray. So you always start with the uh, painting in uh, mid value like this value because when I talk about values dark as dark is 10 white as white is 0 and this is 5 all the painters start with a mid value because you paint the mid values you paint the light and you paint the shadows this will you know comes to you know you'll get the good understanding once we you know put this okay so I'm gonna fill this with mid gray right so now this, this flat circle doesn't look 3 at all, but in digital painting we can do it. So since we learn, uh, I'm just going to create a new layer and clip the mask, clipping mask. Now I'm going to paint the light. So I'm going to use a hairbrush because I want a softer transition. So as soon as I put like a light on top of it, you can see, well, it looks like a 3D sphere, isn't it? So I'm gonna warm it up a little bit, like make it a little bit, even a little bit lighter. So I'm making it white, white, white. And since this is a sphere, it has that, you know, spec highlights on it. It's already looked 3D, but let's add some uh, shadows on it. So I'm gonna create a new layer. Since we painted eyelets, I'm gonna put the bottom. I'm gonna go to the darkest dark. So now I'm going to add the darkest dark here. Since it's sitting, it's contacting somewhere at the bottom. So I'm just like, you know, making it really dark. So now we see, we started with the flat shape like this, just by painting light and a shadow, we just created a 3D sphere. It's pretty amazing, right? The other concept of this, I talked a lot about contact shadows because this looks like, you know, somewhere, you know, out of the, you know, it's like it exists, but somewhere else. So what I can do, I can create a contact shadow when I talked about like the people are walking and stuff like that. So I'm going to create like a, like an object like that. I'm going to fill it black. As soon as I put that black there, it looks like the sphere have some kind of lighting direction towards it. Since the lighting is this side, I'm going to make it a little bit like that. So if you see now, it looks like it exists, you know, literally on a plane, ground plane. It's literally on the ground. So this is how we create like forms and stuff. So there's also something called a reflected light and I'll show you in the concept. So since, we, since I painted that, I'm gonna show you guys this this sphere 
So same thing we painted. We have painted the light and there's highlight side and there's a transition side. And there is something called core shadow. The core shadow is that, you know, where this splits between the light and the dark. And this is shadow side and this is our cast shadow, literally casting the shadow from the light. So that's why it's called cast shadow. And sometimes they call it is like Terminator 2, but we will stick with the highlights, the light, the shadow, and the cast shadow. These three things will make anything look pretty awesome. You'll see the form. So now we created a sphere. I'm going to group it and hide it. Let's create a, um, let's create a cube. So I'm going to create a cube or else you can do the same thing too. So you can create and I'll delete. And I'm just using being really lazy, not painting it. So I'm just using a polygonal lasso tool to create, to show that, you know, there's a flat shape. So this shape looks super flat. This looks like, you know, some like, you know, six points or something like that. It's the same concept. So I'm going to go to the mid gray, transparent pixel and fill that with it. And, you know, clip the mask and let's paint the shadows. And I'm seeing the light is, let's assume the light is coming from this way. So I'm going to paint the shadows first. So this is, you know, what we call the shadow side. We don't see the shadow. And there is this side because when light hits, this is the, you know, this will be like almost white and this will be a lesser value of it because this is a different plane. So I'm not going to put like super white, but I'll just go between mid gray and put somewhere like that. And I'll paint that. Maybe even I'll go white. So now if you see this took like, you know, uh, like a three dimensional objects, it's the same thing. So now I'm going to put it in the light. So if the light is hitting that side, the shadows will be somewhere like that so this it's there so now if you see you know it's already giving illusion that it's on the ground but to to show this like even a little bit better so i'm going to click on the transparency pixels i'm going to pick a value here and I'm going to soften this up. So now we have a depth between the, you know, darkest dark shadow and the light shadow. So now we can see this sits exactly on like a plane from far. So this are lighting form principles and here. So this is the same concept applies on everything, all objects. So now I'm going to do like a cylinder. I'm just doing this fast. Transparency pixels. The light is coming from here. Uh, dark as dark. and use the smudge brush to smudge it, to blend it. So now you can see I literally created uh, the light from just, you know, creating something. 
and I can use uh, the smudge brush, the blend brush to blend this. So now if you see, we created this, you know, uh, object just by like doing something by using transparency pixels and just by creating shapes. So if I put a shadow underneath it, it will read that, you know, it's sitting there. So there you go. So far so good. Okay, uh, I'm going to jump on a demo now. Do you guys have any other questions? Wow, okay, nobody have any questions. Oh, Rega, Rega, I have a question. <laughs> oh, that's my friend's baby. <laughs> Okay. Okay, guys, uh, let's do this. So I'm going to paint uh, like a robot. Like I don't have any idea, but let's see you now whatever I come up with. Uh, if I come up with something good, it's good. If I don't, you know, if I don't. <laughs> so when you paint, just like I feel like, you know, when I used to, when I started painting, I used to have this uh, idea that, you know, I have to be like, you know, this have to be super awesome. And I have to impress everyone. Once I left the thought, you know, it was easy for me to paint because, you know, I didn't have the pressure on me or anything like that. So I'm going to pick this brush. So I'm going to go and do like uh, some like different shapes. So you can create any shapes because these shapes, when you see something, you can stop and, you know, you can paint on it. So this, you know, the things you see and if you see any shape and you can like do that because like what happens, this is called visual library. The things you saw in your uh, life or the shows you watch and things you watch. Now I see a mech and uh, like a mechanical robot and he is like, you know, literally like with tubes and stuff like this. So once I, uh, once I say that, you know, it's there, you guys can imagine that. So how to increase your visual library by looking at things in real world and reading a lot of books or, you know, looking at a lot of stuff. For example, my friend, Michelle, she's in this call too. When she was painting the other day, she was creating this lot of cute characters. But the way she was creating is because she was, I assuming that she watched a lot of Pokemon, a lot of, you know, TV shows when she was growing up and she have a visual library of creating things really cute. So here, what I did, to make this easier, I just, you know, deleted one half of it by like, you know, mark your tool and I'm duplicating by control J and control T for transform and flip it. And I'll just bring it here, like wherever I can see it. So now if you see, now I created something really fast without even thinking about it. Now I can combine this both, then I can erase it and make a shape out of it. So this is how we create shapes. To make this even interesting, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to, you know, get rid of the one side because it kind of like, you know, beats the symmetry purpose of it. So now I can see, I'm just creating like bunch of shapes and like painting, you know, something like literally like creating values. Oops, my Photoshop froze. I'm going to reconnect it, my tablet. Oh, my tablet kind of froze for some reason. Give me a second, guys. So now if you see, I'm just putting and uh, some mid values on my painting and painting it. I'm also painting, going to be painting on this side and focusing out on this side. Because once I paint, I can like literally, you know, uh, take this and mirror it on the other side. I'm just being lazy here because I guess I, I want to show you guys, you know, some stuff. Since we learned about lighting, so I'm going to create a light. 
from this side. So it's always better to create a 45 degree angle light because that shows that, you know, it's aesthetically pleasing to eyes and it creates a good contrast to a good designing. And I learned that from industrial designers, so thanks for them. So I'm keeping that in mind that, you know, my light is coming from this side. So I'm just putting lighter values on most of the sides here. So now you can, like some people can ask Dinesh, like, you know, I don't know like how to create lights and where do I start? Like, you know, for example, I'm creating a helmet. Uh, what do I do? You know, how can I do it? So the answer to it is look for reference. Because painting is literally problem solving. You can be a painter just by like, I feel like everybody can paint. It just like you solve problems while you paint, that's it. For example, if I don't know how to, you know, draw a character in a pose, I will just look for that pose and learn it and draw like maybe several times to get used, get used to it. Then I solved a problem, then I can, you know, go and do that again and again without any problem, without ease. So now if you see, I kind of created some like random shape. This is not um, like, you know, I'm just making it up as I go. But if you see from far, it looks like helmet, right? But for some reason, I feel like his head is bigger. So I'm going to make it a little bit like that or else I can make his torso a little bit bigger. So now we have a sense of human scale in it. So now even you can like make it, yeah, like that. So now we created like a little bit of shape and I'm gonna control C, control V. I'm gonna hide this layer. So now we created the half part of it. I'm going to hit control J, control T and flip it. Now, if you see, you know, it kind of look like a. Now, if you see, it kind of looks like a, you know, um, a character. Does anybody have a question? I got like a pop up sound. Yeah, Michelle's asking, do you play a lot of Dead Space? Your robots look like they are from there. Dead Space? No, I never play Dead Space. That's the thing, right? So, uh, this is like, uh, I think, you know, it's deep down like it's in my visual library that's what i was talking about visual library because since i have done a lot of mech since it's in my visual library it's popping up as a paint and i also did a lot of uh, mech work for my work so you know something pops up okay uh i painted some shape like this now let's put some light and bring them to life life so let's i'm gonna create a 45 degree light so same thing, create a new layer and clip the mask. So if I do it, I'll just paint here, but like I'm just showing you guys, put a clip mask and just like paint some lighting. Since the light is here, I'm making sure that, you know, there's a lot of uh, lighting happening here. So I'm just picking up uh, values by holding on Alt and I'm just sampling and I'm painting it. Now we can see we are getting like a little bit sense of lighting happening from this side. So I'm going to use a hairbrush now. And you can put your uh, things to overlay. So now, as soon as I put this. Now also I can put this to overlay too. Normal. And uh, So now you can see it lighten up the values which are lighter. So we get a little bit of sense of light. So now I'm gonna create another layer. 
I'm gonna change my brush. If I go to normal, it kind of looks like that. And no lay. You can also do odd light, a soft light, I guess. But let's put the overlay and go from there. So now I have some, you know, uh, values now, so I can go and play with it. So this is some kind of armor, which is turning. So I just add that. So I'll put a darker value here. So you can see there's a plane change. So now you can see he has something like that, like an armor. So since I don't want to be straight, so I'm doing that. And this is kind of like some kind of armor. And there's the insertion point. So now I want to, you know, make sure that this is a rounded surface. So I use the blend mode to uh, roll the form. So I'm going to white and I'm going to add some eyelet there, eyelet there. And this kind of creates the, like the lighting depth because the light is coming from this side. So it's hitting everywhere. So I'm going to sample here, right here, right here. Right here. So this side I didn't care like even if I didn't put any value but like if I see from far there is something is happening right so that's really important because like when you paint like make sure you paint like really loose you don't have to be like you know make like super accurate uh, paintings every time because you're just doing it for yourself so I'll make sure like sometimes when I paint and like sometimes in my head like the, this alarm bell goes on and it says like you just paint it by yourself so you know whatever i'll just make whatever i want so now my focal point is here i'll try to put a lot of emphasis and contrast on there than anywhere else because here like i didn't care that much but when i come to here so this is where I put a lot of effort in it because this is my focus point because I don't have to, you know, um, draw each and individual stuff everywhere. Just you know, adding some contrast. Now you can see as soon as I put some light, you know, he has some life in it. And now I can put like a thing there. So, and I can put like a couple of lights here and here. So this lights, you know, help me to create, you know, some kind of forms for me. Um, 
my tablet disconnected again Ugh. So I'm almost done. So now what I'm going to do is, you know, create these lights. I'm just going to put this to color dodge or linear dodge. Why it's not working? It is working. Just gonna lighter value. So now it looks like it's kind of like you know giving that illusion of light there. It just by like adding some kind of lights there. So now if you see all my, like even there's a lot of things happening here, but you know, everything goes here. So now what I could do, I can go my beneath layer and I can just like, you know, start painting lights on it. And this is, this is another way of, you know, showing forms. I'm just gonna add that. This hits here. So there you go. So now we created like something really mechanical, right? So now we can even push the contrast even further. To do that, what I actually do is I create a new layer and I put it to multiply. Where's multiply? Oh yeah. And I put it to dark. So now I starting adding like, you know, some darker things to pop up more. So now I can erase it here as well. So now you can see I can create some kind of like you know, panels just by painting out the shadows of it and same goes here as well So now everything focuses on his face. So you can also put another layer and you can put it to overlay and you can just paint white to bring on white. So this is kind of like a metal plating happening there. And you can also say that the forms are changing here. See, just by adding that highlight, it kind of makes like there's a panel happening. So this is how we create like different shapes and, you know, make stuff. So then you can go and like add like small details however you want it. Like the panel details and everything like that. So now I'll make sure that lighting is there. So I'll just go here. happening there you go so this all looks flat right so what happens when you paint is you are painting 
tend to get blurry sometimes so what I usually do is combine everything at the end and I just go to filter sharp and unsharp marks so this you know gives like a sharper look to your painting so you can see the difference between this and this this and this this look a little bit softer but like this looks like no really no sharp shadows now we can also create illusion of depth by like adding a lot of stuff at the bottom as well by using since the you know light is coming from there i'll just add something like that So now he doesn't look like, you know, he sits in a flat plane, whereas he sits now in like, you know, like in the background. Do you guys have any other question so far? Uh, I think no questions. Wow. Okay. Either I'm doing good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, doing very <real> good. <laughs> there was no question. Nobody talked. Okay. Well, that looks really exciting, though. <laughs> yeah. It's really good, Dinesh, what you're doing. So that's why we're yeah. like watching yeah. what you're doing. <laughs> okay. So this is one way of doing painting. So the other way is to, for example, like people who don't have like that much visual library. So what they can do is they can use their lasso tool. So. By holding on shift, you can create multiple shapes together. So I'm literally, you know, creating shapes just by like holding on shift and creating something. You can also like uh, subtract it by alt subtract. So now I'm going to fill this with black. So now if you see, I created something you know out of the blue where you can't even paint so this is like you know just by lasso tool so the next thing you can do is you can inverse that uh, shape and you can just create a shape and you can paint around it to make a character so as soon as i take the selection selection tool you guys will see there is something happen there so by doing just that, not doing anything, I created something that is like where I can't even come up with, like just by happy accidents. So this one, it's the same concept. So what I'm doing is I'm just going and filling things to see. And what's happening and I'm just, I'm just going do we take that off I'm just seeing some thumbnails so you can create multiple thumbnails like this then you can go and uh, paint on top of it it doesn't have to stick with one but sometimes what I do I just do this for fun to make sure that I'm you know getting used to the painting and I'm also there so instead of that, I'm um, just made something like that. So this is like, I'm not like, you know, thinking anything. I'm just painting freely because I like painting really loose. I'm not like a person like who would sit and like, you know, doodle stuff. So let's say like, you know, you have something like this. Uh, I don't know where to start. Okay, let's, I'll show an example uh, what to do. Uh, helmets. So since we are doing uh, thing helmets, right? Uh, let's look for some helmets. And use lighting as a reference. Now you can see, when I light it, you know, the form kind of changes like this. And there's another one here, the light is coming from this side. There's also another one you could see, this is like a glint and stuff like that. So you can use this as a reference as a part of lighting, how the form changes and everything, and use it for your, let's say, you know, I'm going to use this as an example. I'm going to put it like in the other side. This is where, you know, uh, having two moderate helps because I have the lighting there, so I don't have to think about anything. I'll just go and paint. So the first thing I saw, 
So this one, I'm not creating any layers. So I'm just gonna paint just like that. If it works, it works. It doesn't, it doesn't, that's it. So instead of painting that, uh, when I see like there's an art shadow there. So I'll just paint that, go and paint that. And there's also a glint there. I'll paint that by all delete. And there's also something happening at the top. There's a form change, form change happens here. And I'll put that too. So now it's already you see, you know, this thing pops up. Let's see on, you know, go and paint more. Since the light is there, so there's going to be a form change here as well. So I'm just going to put that there and I'm going to blend it. And I know the light is coming from this side, so there's going to be, this is a different piece, so there's something is happening there. And I know this piece is like going like this, so... I'll put something like that. So now, if you see, it's kind of like the form is like turning like that. I'll make this black as well. So now I'll blend it here to change the form. Now you can see it kind of looks like you know something is happening there, but. Still, I didn't like this shape, so I'm just gonna blend it now. And I'll just go from here. So I already see there is something is happening there. So I'll, from here, I'll just, you know, make this faster. So since the light is there, there'll be something is happening here. And the light is here as well. And this shape, I'm not fan of it. So what I'll do, I'll just erase it. There you go. Now the design already came out pretty good. I kind of like it and I also want that, you know, there is a transition happening here. So I'll just change that there. I'll just use my, you know, soft blend tool and I just, you know, change the form there. So it goes all the way at the back. Okay. So I'm just creating some random shapes now to make it like, you know, something, you know, really comp, like it has a really complexity towards it, but it's not, but from far it will read like really good. I'm also going to have another shape here as well to attach it here. I'll just put some bolt on it there. So far, so good. 
so now what we can do is add some light by going to hairbrush overlay and go to white So there is some kind of sunlight is coming from there. So now what we can do, we can create a contrast by going this side and make everything black to pop out. So as soon as I put this black, you can see, you know, this whole thing came out in the front. So this thing comes by practice, I guess, but something there I'll just erase it I think the white spilled over too so so there you go So what I'll do here is I'll just go here and just soften this edge. Now you can see there's a depth is happening in my painting. So even it doesn't have like a like a 3d form towards it sometimes what you could do is you can create something called rim lighting so rim lighting is sometimes happens uh, on either sides what did like i'll show an example of rim lighting okay i found an example i have an example so if you see this are called rim lighting so which you know separates the background from from the front so i can add the same concept here as well i can show it to you guys so i'll just have a clipping mask and i'll just go here white and i'll just add this here and i'll make sure that i'm on linear dodge so i'm getting like white thickest paint there I'm also adding this in new layer so I can go and erase it like that to get like a sharper edge. So I want to make sure that you know this thing is really sharper. And you can also add and I want this form to be turning. So what I'll do, I'll leave it softer. So as soon as I do that, you guys can see like you know there's 3D form happen just by doing like simple shapes. Now you can also add like go and like add some lights and stuff to make it like even to make it like really mechanical. So for example, if I add one light there, one light there, and I'll just something like a blue light out of the blue. So now I can go to color dodge. Color dodge do like a lot of things. So it creates something like a light is happening there so I can go to airbrush and I'm just going to make sure that it illuminates so now I can go here and add that you know light is reacting on my objects near it because whenever there's a light in anywhere the objects react to it so that's how lighting works but you could see just by doing that you know it creates you know some kind of sense there so now what you can do and i finished it so i'm going to do group it duplicate it and i also really like you know this as well so i'm gonna duplicate again and there you go and i'm going to do a 
sharpen filter sharpen and bingo and you can also create like some kind of atmosphere if you want so yeah so far so good do you guys have any other questions Wow, it's like super, yeah. like super yeah. silent. Hey, Dinesh, it's OJ. Hey. Just the hardest part there is allowing yourself to just go free flow. Yeah. We're so you doing tutorials mm -hmm. that, I mean, like you, you build the technical skills on the tutorial side, but allowing yourself the freedom yeah. to just allow forms to happen, yeah. that's the hard part for me. Oh, yeah. So it took me a while for me to like i would say still i'm not like there like creating forms and turning it around the only thing you get better at is like just doing it for example i can show you the things i was doing it before and i was rusty doing this because i just you know started painting today so when you see the forms here the forms are turning and this one I just like one night on Friday night I was bored I just started painting this and I created this so the point being is like if you keep on doing it you will get like a sense of form and lighting so that's that's why I stopped digital painting because I want to do like traditional painting once you go out and learn stuff eventually it comes in your painting as well so it's better to go out and mother nature teaches everything really good like you know these paintings are done like you know at one setting, you know, just like that. So I think like, you know, if you do one painting a day and have just faith, I think, you know, it will just, you know, comes along, I guess. Hey guys, thanks for uh, joining our meetup event. And if you guys have any questions about the uh, basics of digital painting or write us at 3dmuser at gmail.com or also ask question in our meetup uh, group, CG VFX meetup. Thanks for coming guys.